The Low Carbon Combustion Center is a center that was set up to try and bridge the gap between a university small-scale experiment and what industry might actually want to see. Universities are very good historically at identifying small-scale experiments and proving wonderful things, but a lot of them don't get taken up by industry because we can't demonstrate it at scale. Come with me. If I start with this rig over here, it may just look like a heap of uh, bits put together, but what we're actually looking at is a solid oxide fuel cell facility. The actual fuel cell itself resides in this small container here, but we need all the ancillary equipment around it to get everything into the right condition for it so that we can actually do our experiments. And we're looking at things like contamination of fuel cells. So if you gasified biomass, you don't just get the fuel you want to burn on the fuel cell, you get lots of contaminants with it as well. And we're looking to see how well it can actually survive. We're looking at a facility here that's actually a regenerative thermal oxidizer. Now, if you like what that is, it's a way of saving CO2 by reducing the fuel consumption when you want to clean up an exhaust from a process that's giving you an exhaust that's got some contaminants in it. This is being used with um, the aluminium industry where they're actually putting out some rather nasty pitch and volatile organic compounds into the atmosphere if we don't do something with it. So we use a combustion process to burn those off and clean it so that the exhaust gas goes out clean. But we want to save some energy, so what we do is, where the heat goes up the chimney afterwards, we use that to heat up some bricks. And we have some bricks here. So what would happen is we'd heat these up, and then we'd switch and take the heat out of them to save us burning fuel. The next rig that we have here is a 20 kilowatt down-fired burner. The burner is actually missing off the top of this. It's away being relined at the moment. But this rig enables us to burn coal, powdered coal, pulverized fuels, and also some biomass. Here we have a fluidized bed combustor. Winston will tell you something about our fluidized bed combustor. Basically, this is a very good replacement for the current stationary combustor that has generally been used. What it is, is you have a, sand, a medium, which we use sand normally for fluidized bed, and it acts like a fluid so that you can cover most of the particles. The other thing is that it helps to, to shake the particles so that if there are ash covering any pellets or particles that you're burning, it tends to come off and then you can burn the inside. So you get a very good combustion, very complete combustion. This is a rotary kiln. Now, by a rotary kiln, what we have is a tube that's about 18 inches diameter that rotates at up to about three revs per minute. The rig itself will also incline by a couple of degrees, so we can keep things in a hot tube and look at process with them that can be there for up to an hour. Now, the sort of things that you might want to do with this is you can put products in at the feeder end uh, on the hopper this side, allow it to go through, and you can get gasification or pyrolysis and convert waste into fuel. Other things you can do are process engineering ones. So for instance, you could throw rayon fibers in this end and get carbon fiber out the other side. So depending on how long you take, what the size of the product you're putting in, you've got a whole range of things you can do with it. I mentioned earlier on the idea of carbon capture and sequestration. We are in the process of building a 300 kilowatt um, down-fired burner, similar to the pulverized fuel rig we saw earlier. Until we get to that facility and get that installed here, we do have a conventional furnace. And by a conventional furnace, we have a furnace with a burner at the front end. Now with this, we've adapted it so that it can actually run on pure oxygen instead of air. But if we burn something with pure oxygen, we end up with a much higher temperature. One of our other areas of interest and where my background is, is on aviation. And with the aviation industry, we've been looking at alternative fuels. This is a small scale gas turbine. It's an APU. The beauty of the APU is that by changing the load on the generator, 
that we can actually change the air-fuel ratio on the combustor without changing temperature and pressure. And that lets us understand how the combustion process is going on and how changes in the combustion process might affect the emissions coming out the back end. We're now at our atmospheric combustion line where we can look at combustion systems and test them under atmospheric conditions. In particular, what we're looking at here is burner development, new, new fuel injectors for the future. So we have here, if you like, one of the largest hair dryers in Sheffield. At the top here, we have what we call a gas analysis ray, and that's sniffing the exhaust, if you like. The gases are then transferred via that red line that you can see there up to our gas trailer where we actually measure. This is our mobile emissions laboratory, and uh, we're using this uh, to measure the exhaust emissions from various commercial burners and also to find out the emissions from uh, various types of alternative fuel. We also are looking at some acoustics while we do this. We're talking about very, very large pressure waves when we talk about acoustics. So large that they can actually shake the engine to pieces and destroy it. We'll now move to the ASRIG, the Aviation Fuel Thermal Stability Test Unit. It was built in the early 90s by Rolls-Royce and it's one of uh, three rigs in the world that uh, do this type of testing. Uh, basically we're looking at uh, recreating the fuel system from the tank uh, in the aircraft right the way through to the combustion chamber. So all the filters and uh, moving parts and the flow in the, in the engine that it is exposed to, but mainly the, the heat loading that the fuel gets. If we look at the way engine technology has been developed in terms of making it more efficient, it's to increase the pressure ratio. Increasing the pressure ratio increases the temperature and it won't be long before we're increasing the temperature and pressure to a stage where the fuel can't take it. One last thing that's probably worth showing you at this stage is we saw an APU which is effectively a gas turbine. That's what's currently accepted today as the de facto way of propulsion for aircraft. But the thing is we perhaps might need to think out of the box for the future. And one of the things we're looking at is pulse detonation engines. And this is a prototype that we've been building to do some research on. What we're trying to do here is actually produce a pulse detonation engine which is actually going to work with a liquid fuel and enable us to have a very efficient propulsion source that might even be as, as good as half the fuel consumption over today's aircraft.